One of the things that sets Charlie Russell apart from his contemporaries in the late 1800s, the early portion of the 20th century, is the fact that Russell was a fluent, a f fluent exerciser, if I can use that term, of American Indian Sign Language. He was able to comprehend, he was able to cognitively process words from the heart, as our American Indian people used to call sign language. And this had the potential of connecting Russell with over <clears throat> two-thirds of the North American continent in terms of the fluidity of comprehension between different tribes. Duncan MacDonald, of whom Lake MacDonald was named after, it was actually a Kootenai name, uh, Sacred Dancing Waters before that, but Duncan MacDonald, a uh, mixed-blood uh, Scots uh, Salish man, carved his name in a tree up there at Lake MacDonald, and it became known as Lake MacDonald. And indeed, one of Charlie Russell's best friends was Duncan MacDonald. He's the one that pointed this out in an interview with the Great Falls Tribune when Duncan MacDonald was actually 83 years old. So I like to open up with the fact that we have an extremely special man, a special and several areas, including the natural, uh, National Statuary Hall. We've chosen two citizens, Jeanette Rankin and the cowboy artist, Charlie Russell. Although it's important that we understand that Russell probably painted more Indians than cowboys, more buffalo than cows, and certainly more wolves than he did dogs. <laughs> I'd like to open up this song. In one week, I begin my 31st season in Glacier. The song is called Legends of Glacier, where Charlie Russell happily had a summer residence uh, for the last portion of his career. Grandmother's stories ignited the spark now warming the heart of the land. Fantastic odysseys, requested dreams, were part of our first human class. Elders have summoned the auras of old, remembered and treasured through time. Don't be surprised, this land comes alive when the legends of glaciers survive. Gray wolf and beaver chief caretake the land. The heart is the sun's a living trunk. Owl eyes and eagle wings perfect the view where spirit and matter are one. Permit your wings to transcend the things consuming and cluttering life. You're one on one with Creator Son. When the legends of glaciers survive
jeans of fleshing. Legends of Glacier I bet it's the bears described himself as an illustrator. Then the question would come, first of all, what did he illustrate? To answer this question, and a lot of this stuff, after I received kind of the surprise word in uh, that I'd received the C.M. Russell Award, looking at Russell, he illustrated the ecological, the cultural, and the historical essence of the American West. He also illustrated, within the historical essence of the American West, he chose to begin really from a point in time where it's on the map. And it's on the map, as far as our United States of America goes, with the Lewis and Clark Expedition. In the Lewis and Clark Expedition, there were two unpaid adult members. Of course, this was the Indian woman, Sakabawea, and the man that we know in history as York. This is a picture of, by the way, Charlie Russell and the management of light. It was part of the mastery uh, here. But here, Sacagawea is embracing her brother, Kamawet. Kamawet was crucial, and the connection with the Shoshones was crucial to successfully cross the Rocky Mountains and the Bitterroots before the snow came in and, well, pretty much destroyed everybody. So there we are. Uh, the song I would like to play for you right now is entitled In Search of York. One another thing that Russell illustrated within his historical illustrations was irony. With the black man, with the events of the last few days in South Carolina, it reminds us that not everybody comprehends that we are all brothers and sisters. And one of the things that Charlie Russell recognized very early in his artwork that this was true. This is a picture of York and the Mandan Indians who are actually touching and trying to rub off some of the black. Was it charcoal? Was it paint? Oh my God, this guy was born to be a warrior. For that's what our warriors used to do. Almost like camel, almost like the uh, nighttime uh, raiders there. In the story of York, he dressed York up in some of the fanciest, just clean, revolutionary, revolutionary era garb of the time. Whereas historically, this was nonsense. What Charlie Russell, I believe, was doing was representing to the nation during the centennial of the Lewis and Clark expedition that there was something very ironic, something very wrong going on here. And he was a champion in my studies of the underdog. This is the song I wrote in search of York. There are various depictions of York. A couple other artists add their, uh, add some impressions, but this is um, search of York. Oh, we're gonna uh, turn you into Boatsman right now. We're gonna go, oh, is, there is the map after the Lewis and Clark expedition. This entire Rocky Mountain Great Plains region was prior to the expedition was called Terra Incognita, unknown lands. After the expedition, they filled in a lot of gaps. And are we raring to go? Okay, burn off a few calories here after lunch. We're gonna go, oh, yo, oh, yo, do, oh, yo, oh, yo, do, oh. One more time now, louder. When we left St. Louis, we were laughing and singing to the rhythm of the misery. We were the command 
to Captain's West called the Core of Discovery. Of all of my friends with whom I was impressed, who stood more intriguing than all. He was brave, loyal, and strong, seemed nothing that he didn't have. Except for freedom in the land of the free Cause his skin was black It's my duty to report His name was York Indian tribes were in of my friend They called him Big Miss His skin the told of rich mother earth Respect awaken him As Jefferson's vision pushed us across The continent, tribe after tribe York and natural passport Engaging young and old It became apparent to most of the core That no one should be behold The river reached a fork in search of your triumph and pain, losses and gains, endured on foot and boat. The camp would spend the winter in, twas but to a vote. Come and be counted, come all of ye crew, come York. And bird woman too. Cedars bow to proof. At what first occurred, an American election in which democracy was served. The voices on the shore included yours. On our return, our hopes and spirits soared. A double pay in land grants to the core. But to Clark, York was just a slave to keep and hire out to. Ignoring pleas for freedom, as callous masters do. have tumbled since the last of my friend, though eventually Clark set him free. And for a time, he drove his own team, tasting freedom to a decree. Some say disease stole the light from his eyes, on route returning to Clark. But in words from a sober traveler, I heard what I pray is the truth. York somehow ventured back up the big river to live what he once knew. The natives as before a welcome York. In search of York. York, the last man on the right there. In search of York. Everybody knows. In search of your Back in uh, 
The early stages of the Russell Award, there was a fellow by the name of Ian Tyson, which is a really definitely a cowboy legend, uh, that wrote a song uh, that uh, probably propelled him to, to the award and the recognition that he has with uh, bringing Western uh, culture into experience. I kind of, I guess a few years later, I came along and uh, kind of tried to dial in a little bit more with our Native American experience here. And uh, I would like to honor the only other, I guess, musician and the uh, poet in the C.M. Russell alumni. This is a song that Ian Tyson wrote. It's called The Gift, if you know it. Oh, the, of course, where would we be without some cowboy poetry? Here's hoping your trail is a long one, plain and easy to ride. May your dry camps be few and health ride with you to the pass on the Great Divide. St. Louis, over in Missouri, the mighty Mississippi, where the rose flows, a son was born to Mary Russell, and it starts a legend, every cowboy knows, the young kid Russell was born to wonder, ever west. He was bound to home. A kid at 16 in 1880, out in Wild Montana, he found his home. God made Montana for the wild man, for the pagan and the soothing crow. He saved his prey. Here for Charlie, say get her old town before she comes. Got to get her old town, cause she's bound to go. God hung the stars over Judith Basin. God put the magic young Charlie's hands and all the scene. And all remembered Every shining mountain Every long horn brand He could pick the light On horse I'd shine Great passing herds Of the buffalo A cow can cold On a rainy morning And the twisting wrist Of the hula hand throw God made Montana for the wild man, for the pagan and the Sioux and crow. He saved his greatest gift for Charlie, say get her all down before she goes. Got to get her all down, cause she's bound to go. Charlie to his home up yonder. He said, Kid Russell, I got a job for you. You're in charge of sunsets out in wild Montana. Cause I can paint them quite as good as you. And when you're done, go out and have a few. And Nancy Russell. Make sure it's just two. God made Montana for the wild man, for the pagan and the Sioux and crow. He saved his greatest gift for Charlie. Say, get her old before she goes. Got to get her old town. 
Cause she's bound to go Get her on top Before she goes With the Russell legacy, there is uh, oh, so many weird things have happened just recently in Montana's history. One was the, uh, I guess, the dethroning of Russell country into, I don't know, north central Montana. It's kind of strange when you have an icon such as Charlie in the state capitol statuary kind of being taken off our tourism maps. One of the things that I noticed in uh, in Russell's work, there's this underwriting theme is that, well, with when land belonged to God, which I will uh, close out this presentation with, there was an idea that there was cosmos, there was order, there was structure, there was harmony, there were the laws of nature that were in place. When Charlie Russell arrived, well, actually things were already being thrown out of kilter and really had been for over a century prior to that point, but things were pretty much functioning. The conversion of grass, the conversion of plant food into flesh and bone with the buffalo and the conversion of that energy from the buffalo into our Blackfeet, into our Salish, into our Crow, our Cheyenne, our indigenous peoples, this was a beautiful conversion. And this was something that was lost within Russell's, uh, within Russell's lifetime. The r buffalo that numbered over 30 million at the time of Lewis and Clark were down to, actually, I believe the census in 1899, uh, Hornaday expedition counted there were 1,097 buffalo left in less than 100 years after the Lewis and Clark expedition. Where we'll be free again 
There we can see again the home that was known as Harper. And girls and boys, there'll be stories told About the land that taught us to talk With mother's hand, we learn to walk We travel back in time to the last high stage With the sun's creation fully engaged Spirits and heroes, tricksters and fools The cast includes everyone In this unfolding stage of our buffalo cafe Nature's anointed play yeah. Everybody sing now The buffalo cafe The buffalo cafe Buffalo Cafe Let us restore the Buffalo Cafe I'd like to thank someone uh, right now for uh, putting up with me and also helping out with the technical aspects of the uh, presentation. Gal was a few years ago runner-up teacher of the year in Montana. Uh, she teaches math and science, has one of the first outdoor classrooms in Montana. She's, uh, her name is Patty Bartlett. She teaches at uh, Seeley Lake Middle School. Please give Patty Bartlett a hand. <laughs> Got it. With the, uh, this will be the last song in this presentation. We've expanded this and we'll be uh, starting with this up in uh, Glacier National Park uh, next Sunday is our first day uh, of this uh, 31st season. But because of Russell's connection with Glacier National Park, with really Glacier Park's connection through Triple Divide, you know, we have three of the major uh, watersheds, three of the major drainages in North America extend from Glacier National Park with the Gulf of Mexico drainage via the Missouri and the Mississippi rivers. We have the Columbia River drainage to the west and then to the northeast we have the Hudson's Bay drainage there. So there is a story within a story in Glacier and how how appropriate, how perfect it is to have Russell be a part of the landscape of Glacier in his commentary and in his growth as an artist. You can see that as things start to unfold after they uh, purchased the lot and developed the uh, property uh, just oh, just within a less of about a half mile from Ap where Apgar in Montana is now in Lake McDonald and developed those relationships oh, a couple, few miles from the railhead of the Great Northern at that particular time. But it was that growth and that that place to slow down and that place to also have people who you wanted to come visit you, come visit you there. It was uh, fascinating uh, to, to hear about the different people. Uh, it's of a concern within the years to come. Many may know Bullhead Lodge, where Charlie Russell habitated in the summers there, is falling apart and is going back to the planet we're not sh quite sure we want that to happen, but there should be, there should be an initiative uh, coming up on that. The last song I would like to share with you is called When the Land Belonged to God, even though the actual inscription of the painting says, When Land Belonged to God. It does not say, When the Land. There's something we have in our Western worldview, the sock, the dog. 
where it objectifies and it really depersonifies. It takes the, Martin Buber had a, uh, had a book and a note of uh, I and thou. In other words, it demotes it from a sacred status. And that's one of the big differences between the, uh, the world of my father's ancestors and my world, my Blackfeet world, and the world that was inherited from many of our European ancestors is that we have a different vision of the world where the world had somehow fallen. In the painting, When the Land Belonged to God, Charlie Russell has reconstructed the full and the complete picture. There is, uh, Charlie was adop- adopted by our Blackfeet people. It's Blackfeet word, uh, awakasi. Awakasi means antelope. Put, given to him on the basis of our, some white buckskin, I guess it was sewn on his uh, britches there to uh, uh, help, pants, uh, help uh, sew up his pants there at one point. But here, this is a painting of exhibiting an underwater person, an underwater person, the beaver chew around in the front there. And of course, what happened to the beaver? Because the beaver was not what brought down the tree. It killed the tree, but the tree fell over of its own accord, but it's still connected. The wolf, perhaps, mysteries within. You can see off, off where the picture is, there is also a ptarmigan. There's a prairie chicken down there. The prairie chicken represents a winged person. Our Blackfeet looked at winged persons, four-legged persons. We were two-legged persons, underwater persons. So, so we could be underwater persons for the beaver winged persons with the grouse that you will see later on in the picture. And then we have our closest relative on earth, Makui, Makui. And the sign, American Indian sign talk is this for wolf. Wolf was the embodiment of cultural, of social organization for people. It's cultural organization, but it is cooperation, coordination, communication necessary to surviving in a large group. And of course, the center of all, the buffalo. Not one Indian or one cowboy or one cow in this entire picture that Charlie Russell painted to live on for our Montanans to ponder and to also hopefully be inspired into action. This is Land of God. of 16, Charlie Russell departed from his St. Louis home, a young man whose big dreams had delivered a call to the heart. So by train and stagecoach he made his way through an endless sea of grass that blew to the shore of the big sky some broken sod where the land belongs to God a rising choir of buffalo mountains were sentinels for creatures below stirring tones from long ago that survived an eclipse of the soul. As the curtain closed on our noble play, before the stage was struck by cashiers and surveyors, he carefully captured the seeds of the big sky's unbroken sod, where the land belonged to God. For all the wild kin of man danced in rhythm with the land. The grizzly bear and gray wolf first were chiefs. For episodes of old man's travels helped our people first unravel the mystery of sacred time. Between the earth and sky
sign language up there. Colors are dry, the vision forever stands. The purest gift is not a gold, but an art that awakens a soul. As we choose our trail up the great divide to an unknown stage on the other side, we might realign with the seas of the big skies, unbroken saw. Where the land belongs to God On the big skies unbroken sod Land belongs to God Thank you very much. William, you back up? Okay.